everywhere scatter in the early of today as everywhere pause a lot of people have been in tears a lot of people actually want mama yakubu i next chairman when they wanted to conduct the 2023 election a lot of people want mama yakubu not to compromise on the election thing a lot of people want him to give the winner to the person that really win the election and all of that but at the end of the day the otherwise actually happen but looking at it now the end have surely come nigerians did not expect that this will surely happen this this way for mama yakubu a month ago and a lot of people pull out to swear for this man because they believe that he was the one that made Tinubu to get into power and bestow suffering on them but they swear for Mama Yakubu and the end that finally come you can see what is happening now it have finally died Nigerians have been writing out RIP on different social media platforms you will see everything on full details in this very video just stay connected to the end of this video if you can share this video ensure you share share to different social media platforms let it go viral and if you can share just like it as you're watching it like it give it a thumbs so that will be recommended for us. We will stay connected. Going back again. Welcome you back to Lajubom Wash TV. I don't have bad news for you today. The of religious gossip. And the boys will leave your find for Mohammed. What is happening in the Christian world? Join now. It makes sense with Lajubom. Hello my great and wonderful viewers, we're coming back to Lucky Power Watch TV. For those of you coming across the channel for the very first time, ensure you click the rest of the button appearing on your video screen. And do well to click the notification bell icon so that whenever we drop a new video in a few hours time, YouTube will easily let you to know. The worst is finally coming to the worst now and a lot of things is going on in the political zone right now. And I always tell you that this is not the time for Nigerians to be missing information as far as the political system of Nigeria is concerned. A lot of things is actually happening. You know, in course of the election, a lot of things actually happened in course of the election and a lot of Nigerians were not pleased with the electoral results and the electoral process because it was not what Mamo Yakobo promised. It was not what Mamo Yakobo promised that he delivered in the course of the election. A lot of people put their mind and their life in the election thing because they believe that the suffering that they have suffered in Nigeria will surely come to end because they believe they want to change government. A lot of people, due to what Peter B said, they hope that Peter B bestowed on people makes people to come out in the course of the election. Like Nigeria election back then, people don't usually come out to vote, but Peter B called a lot of people out and a lot of people voted, including myself. We voted, and at the end of the day, some tragic happened which you know when Nigerians did not stop there they came out a year after the power was given to Bola and Tinubu they came out to swear for everybody that make it possible for Tinubu to get into power so as to bestow suffering on them they swear for Mama Yakubu as the leading person but something tragic is happening it have finally died a lot of Nigerians have been writing RIP in the earlier today so I would like you to stay connected to the end of this video you will see the video of everything yourself you can share this video and show you share it share the different social media platforms let go over and if you can share it just like it like it give it a thumb up so that it will be recommended for us voters intimidation took place in course of the election voters suppression took place they did not allow a lot of people to vote high neck officials came out and they made it known to the general public that their system wasn't working fine after nigerian government gave mamo yakubu over 200 billion to conduct the 2023 election i next year must come out with a lot of excuses doing in course of the election a lot of people came out to warn mamo yakubu they said if you like you should manipulate the electoral team but mama yakubu gave them the assurance that he's not going to manipulate the electoral team and all of that he said the election is going to be transparent it's going to be credible and the election is going to be free and fair but at the end of the day mama yakubu turned his back against nigerians just because of something which you know and which i know now a lot happened to nigerians since when tinobu get into power there's high in price of commodity of goods and all of that people cannot even afford to eat two square men in their houses again the suffering they were suffering back then in the hand of buari it is to power seven and a lot of people died of hunger which i'm aware of and all of that and i posted a lot of it on this same platform to the extent that a lot of people drop out from school just because when tinobu got there increased the tuition fee of a lot of institutions and all of that the federal institutions were high up and all of that and a lot of people dropped out and a lot of people turned to criminals in the street the high level of criminality in the street now is inflating 
and things are happening in Nigeria right now. I missed everything that happened in the course of the election. I next to come out to pronounce the winner as Paula Amentinubu and all of that. I missed the underage voting that we saw the video evidences in different places in Nigeria, especially the northern part of Nigeria, the underage voting that took place and all of that. We saw children that are not even up to eight years holding plastic voters' cards and casting their vote for APC. And we saw situations where talks hijacked different police units, especially in Lagos and River State. Ten people that are not voting for APC, you go back to your house. If you are voting for Labour Party, don't bother to come out to vote. They made the declaration a day before the election, and Nigerian police came out and said that the person in Solomon that made the declaration was just joking and all of that. And at the end of the day, he perpetrated it. He sent out a lot of talks in different police units to stop people from voting for the Labour Party and all of that. Even to the extent that the face of Lady Jennifer was injured and yet nobody was brought to book. MC Oloman was not even called for questioning in the police station. Talk less of being arrested or talk less of putting him in jail and all of that just because everything worked in favor of APC. And at the end of the day, INEC chairman still did everything impossible to win the case in court. Even when the issues of pointing to him in court to appear in court, he never appeared. Never count the judiciary as something serious and all of that. Now, something tragic have happened, which a lot of Nigerians have shed tears off. A lot of Nigerians have been crying and crying and crying just because of what is happening right now. So I like guys to stay connected to the end of this video to see everything yourself. They've been writing RIP and a lot of Nigerians have finally dropped their hope because they so much believe that the end has finally come. They've been writing RIP. Just stay connected, you will see the video yourself. I'm coming back again. <laughs> it's about the will of the people. If a democratic process is appropriately followed, and produce some candidates other than one you prefer you recognize that a choice has been made by the people it is their choice and the citizens rally to get things moving but when the process has not been followed properly uh, there is a cloud there is a legitimacy problem for a regime and for uh, any nation, especially a new nation, uh, legitimacy and how it's managed is fundamental. Uh, one of the most important discussions around this subject uh, was in a book titled The First New Nation by an American called Simon Martin Lipset. And, and so legitimacy is so fundamental to how democracies make progress. And when there is a, when there is a crisis of legitimacy, you can tell how much progress can be made. And, and this is why it is important to ask the question, was there a democratic process in place? And let me tell you my reading from studying countries, democracies, these kinds of challenges through the years. My reading is that we proceeded into a very sad punch in which the constitution is easily given short shrift. And that's the point that uh, Dati Baba Ahmed tries to make about what he says. And we can, you know, throw more light on that if it comes up. When the people feel that a process doesn't reflect what they have agreed to in a modus vivendi, the ground norm, the constitution, um, they restrain their giving of legitimacy to that process. Doesn't mean that process can't go on. Could it has lead to countries still going on? But uh, the people do not believe that these coups have been carried out necessarily in their interest. And if you look at the conversation around whether democracy is dying, what can be done to save democracies from dying around the world, one of the more interesting ones was offered by a Cambridge uh, professor called uh, David Ronsiman. And, and that's part of the point is he tries to make that um, democracies die sometimes when in a kind of sophisticated manner a civilian coup d'etat takes place so if there is a significant number of nigerians who believe that a, a, a civilian coup d'etat has taken place uh, exists it restrains democracy in a way that it leads to in fact some vicious circle let me tell you how i think these things will, will resolve themselves if you take what happened in lagos for example on the 18th of march as a pattern 
what you will see is that bullying as a way of getting your way in a governmental arrangement gradually becomes institutionalized anybody who does not agree is bullied in some form and the outcome is full-blown fascism just check how uh, in weimar germany um the nazi party emerged the role that joseph goebbels played supporting hitler in propaganda terrorism and look at what is happening in nigeria and you will see it clearly when advancing fascism meets uh, this kind of trend in the country boy do we have a potential blowout for a country with the kind of promise nigeria had in 1960 and that's the worry that thinking people have about what is going on uh, one public official who manipulates things to suit a personal need whether it's a political whether it's an ideological or a money induced uh, 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 reason ultimately the outcome crushes even that person that's the trajectory nigeria is traveling that we may have full-blown fascism from this process and this fascism will engage the road to afghanistan <laughs> at that time the choices before us would be pretty limited one if you can you leave the country two if you can't you'll be consumed by it or if we can all think clearly sit together now to recognize that our country is all dressed up with nowhere to go and begin to work at some solutions well that, that's a very interesting an analysis that you've actually given there some on the opposite side of the fence would suggest that it's nowhere near as dramatic as as sort of the weimar you know germany or, or afghanistan or anything like that whereas i i suspect a significant percentage of nigerians would also agree with you but of course uh, professor utomi history is constant a battleground isn't it I mean so for some people this is and will continue to be the great sort of patriotic war I guess people like yourself so at each junction something will stir things up again and a whole new complex of political battles begin again but they would argue that Nigeria has remained perhaps barely on top but in any case on top of it since 19 99. Well, um, you could say that it is okay to continue to exist, and which is what Nigeria has done. But if you are a country that has the kind of potential that Nigeria does have, and you function at a level that makes you the poverty capital of the world, and you function at a level where the Vice President of the United States stores Africa and ignores Nigeria, a president of the United States spent eight years, president of the United States of African descent, spent eight years in office, ignores Nigeria, never visits it, goes several times to South Africa. You, you live in this kind of situation. Your dignity as a Nigerian is definitely a challenge. Your passport almost stands as an embarrassment when you want to cross borders and you ask yourself, what is the point? of saying we survive these things if in reality uh you you barely have any dignity left to yourself because you carry that passport now these are some of the considerations that lead patriots to saying can there be a different way can there be a better way unfortunately the obsession with power for the state of state capture for the state of what i have actually referred to as state hijack you know look i've served on the boards of south african companies and uh, for a couple of years on the board of one that you know really covers the continent uh, uh, Deloitte and at board meetings one of the things that come up like at every meeting is the problem and the challenge of state capture and you know South Africa set up the Zondo Commission after the Guptas and all of that and, and whenever the conversation gets to state capture and why people seek public office i kind of like laugh and say well i'm glad you south africans are pushing hard on this matter but you know what <laughs> if you come to nigeria you understand what state capture is 
what you have. In fact, I had to characterize it enough to, you know, uh, talk to State Hijack in, in, in this book that I, I wrote four years ago, you know, about citizenship, you know, state capture, creeping fascism, and the criminal hijack of politics in Nigeria. Now, this vision of Nigeria is, is not one offered lightly. My whole commitment has been to how do you build a society better for your children? How do you leave out this uh, um, obligation of citizenship that you make your shoulders available for the next generation to stand on so that they can build a better society because they can see further? That's a and very good point, Prof. Very, very good point. And, and I have to say that people like yourself have observed and participated in Nigerian politics to a greater or lesser extent even before 1999. I mean, do you recognize in the sequence of political events, and, and perhaps this might make you repeat yourself a little, but I mean, your, your thoughts are always very illuminating. Do you recognize in the sequence of political events a diminishing of Nigeria's democratic spirit every time, for example, the inauguration comes around? Or are there aspects of Nigeria's democracy that reassure you that it has been to some extent working since 1999 you know part of the reason that this moment is enormously tragic uh, is that um, up till about a month no, no no two weeks before the elections of the 25th of February I thought to myself my goodness look how far we've come he looked at the youth of Nigeria who defied the traditional cleavages, ethnicity, religion, uh, geography, and we're holding out to a new order. And I, I, I was amazed, in fact, I, I put down the title of a book, which I moderated, you know, We Saved Nigeria, that I made it, where we nearly saved Nigeria. Just seeing how young people were galvanizing around an idea not around cults of personality uh, that were nourished by uh, um, ethnicity and the rest. In fact, when you think of this, one of the most intelligent commentaries on what has happened to Nigeria was offered by the Vice President, uh, um, Professor Shimbajo, at his uh, Nibs Kuru uh, um, lecture. Because you see, fundamentally, uh, human beings are judgmental. To make life easy, human beings turn to stereotypes. So this man is from this place. He must be this kind of person. And that judgmental nature can be manipulated very easily by politicians if they are not the right quality politicians. Even in advanced democracies, I, I, I've been speaking to work being done at Harvard Center for Moral Cognition by a group of scholars who bring together neuroscience um, psychology, philosophy, using game theory and all that, to look at how people make choices. Uh, there's a, a professor there who's called Joshua Green, who has essentially uh, led this work and he's written an interesting book titled Moral Tribes, um, Emotion, Reason, and the Gap Between Us and Them. If we had good political parties that raised politicians who recognize where the country is going, they would have thought in the manner that Professor Yemio Shimbaju thought through in that lecture. Unfortunately, when you allow politicians who really do not see a bigger picture than their personal grab for power, you use those cleavages, divide people, and make progress truly difficult. Now, <clears throat> Nigeria had made some progress in the movement that threw up uh, um, the Labour Party, Peter Obi, and all of that. <clears throat> but all of a sudden, within three weeks, we went from this nearly saving Nigeria to the gates of Hotel Rwanda. And you got to say to yourself, what is it about power that makes people unable to see the damage that they do in this pursuit? And so yes, there has been some progress in terms of what happened, but that progress partly 
it was made possible by the fact that terrible things happened. So there was a generation desperate for a new order. There were people around who had had enough of what the current order has brought us. And so those people said, we want something new. But they were often like powerless. Oh, what can we do? They will manipulate it. We know elections in Nigeria are a joke. They don't really work. <coughs> and then Mahmoud Yakubu suddenly says to them, no, we have this system, divas. We will swear on everything we know this will work. And suddenly they became more confident. Oh my goodness, maybe we can make the difference. Their hopes rose. But as it turned out, it was the ultimate four one nine of all. When that turned out the way it turned out, their spirits sunk. Many started thinking of how they would leave Nigeria. Others began to look for options. But right. That, that's a tire, trouble of where we are today. How do we reconstruct in the face of this? A kind of situation so the fact that the elections have been deteriorated had led many nigerians to giving up on democracy accepting elections as coup d'etats that civilians carry out and if you read ron Siman, <coughs> and even better still if you read uh, uh levitsky and ziblatt who wrote books with a similar title i think ron Siman's book is uh, how democracy ends ron Siman, and um, um, Ziblatt and um, uh, Levitsky and Ziblatt's book is uh, How Democracies Die or something like that. Um, you will see a pattern recognized about the trajectory that even in some more developed countries, democracy is traveling and the things that need to be done to save that democracy. Right. The movement that happened last year seemed like a major effort to save Nigeria's democracy. And that's why those people got interested in politics. And then what happened, happened. However, right. a takeaway from it is that the consciousness that has been raised by their becoming involved may impact how they react, especially given how this process is resolved. It may either play it, may play it that way, that they write the whole thing off, or that they say, okay, it's possible when you raise your voice that something can happen. Right, but given given that, um, and and the fact that this is in 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 the courts, I mean, obviously that process has to be allowed to um, go through. Um, but do, do you see Nigeria's democracy? I mean, or, or let me put it this way: How do you see Nigeria's democracy progressing from this point? Is that contingent on the outcome? of the courts because if, if it goes the way that you don't necessarily want it to go i'm wondering whether you would remain optimistic cautiously op cautiously optimistic or not at all optimistic well there are many factors at play uh thought leadership is a very important thing in this kind of thing uh i, I was recently watching um uh, professor osita Ubu's uh ted talk uh from out of enugu i believe when he talks about intellectual freedom fighters and, and worries about the African intellectual who for a variety of reasons just accepts uh, what is sent down from Washington and all of that he wants to survive and, and, and stop. Africa needs intellectuals who can provide thought leadership of what will save Africa. Uh, if thought leaders really come out and provide appropriate leadership we may have a rethinking and a reinvention of African democracy. And so that can be one outcome. Uh, and that comes to be with the courts. I mean, people have different views about whether the courts can be taken seriously or not taken seriously. Um, Africans need to begin to rebuild their institutions. If you look at all the conversations around how human progress takes place, a variety of things are thrown up, but two very critical contending perspectives. The one, progress is a function of institutions. I've talked about this for so long. I've written one book about that, uh, 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 you know, managing uncertainty. Um, another is values, culture. Culture shapes human progress. We carry on in Nigeria today as if values don't matter. If our political class is not a values-based political class, what we will get is collapse of the society. Right. And, and again, don't take my 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 my, my ideas. Read Jared Diamond's effort in the book Collapse, how human um, uh, 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 society has failed through human history. 
and, and you will see in careful study after careful study that the Nigerian political class is pushing towards failure of Nigerian society because there's a collapse of culture in Nigeria. The values that they bring to the table cannot sustain social progress. Two, our institutions are not getting strengthened. And every time we uh, abuse our institutions and they can't push back right. on wrong, uh, we push ourselves down the path of stage failure. <laughs> Thank you for staying connected, my great and wonderful viewers. You can see what is happening now. That was Pat who told me talking in that very video, and that man have said it all. What is happening right now is the fact that democracy have ended in Nigeria. A lot of people have been writing RIP for Nigeria democracy, that Nigeria democracy is finally gone. Nigeria democracy is dead. That is what a lot of people are writing right now because they believe that a lot of election is still upcoming. When those state election is coming in a few months time, it's still this same year. When this election is coming, and they believe that what have been transpiring for 2023 election that lingers to 2023 election in Lagos State, that still lingers to 2023 election in Bayesa and in Kogi State, that is still the same thing that is going to play out in Ondo State election because a lot of people believe that in course of the 2023 presidential election, I make Mama Yakubu give the vote to the highest bidder. That was what happened. A lot of people believe that their vote does not count because, according to the video evidence, that fly on media platform especially twitter they saw that INEC chairman did a lot of shenanigans and a lot of irregularities and criminality took place in course of the election and at the end of the day Mamon Jacobo did not come out to tender any apology to nigerians it's not a single apology he didn't tender anything and he still came out in course of Kogi State election and Bayesa election the way he promised everyone and net in shatter mouse and the other media platform and media houses both in nigeria and nasa nigeria before they did the presidential election the way mama yakubo promised everyone and net that the election is going to be free and fair and credible and the election is going to be transparent the same way he promised everyone and net in the presidential election is still come out in the state election in lagos state and in Bayesa and in Kogi state the election that took place in 2023 after presidential election they still came out to promise heaven and earth and yet the same rascality and the criminality and the shenanigans that happened in the course of the presidential election still played out again in the state election that was where Dino Melayu came out that they gave him thought and all of that and he said he knows that I make Mama Yakubu rig the election to the highest bidder that was it so it is very obvious that things are really happening and don't forget let me date you back T.B. Joshua before he died the prophet said something a lot of people believe that it's not a man of God that is an herbalist, is this is that is occulted. But the man said something. He said things like this will happen in Nigeria election. That the vote of the people will not count and all of that. That there will be irregularities and all of that. But if it is not avoided, if it should happen, the pollution will surely take place. That if Nigerian democracy died due to the handwork of the ruling class and all of that, the revolution will surely take place. And looking at it now, it finally happened. And Paul Enesi after the death of if Joshua Pollen is to come out and he still want Mama Yakubu severely. He won Mama Yakubu so hard in course of the election, even before they corrected the election. But at the end of the day, Mama still made sure that Nigeria democracy died. A lot of people believe that Nigeria election and Nigeria democracy is dead. That is why they say that what will happen in all those state elections and other elections all across Nigeria this year and even years after. Since Mama Yakubu is still there, they said nothing will happen that the democracy democracy have ended in Nigeria, that the end have come to democracy, that there's nothing like democracy again. So people call it a bureaucracy and all of that because a lot of Adbiros came out because of the election to beat voters and all of that, that they must not vote for a preferred candidate that they choose. So stuff like that happened in the country where we say they practice democracy and security agencies are out there looking at the talks, nothing is being done. Now, a lot of people believe that Nigeria democracy is dead. That's why they be writing ROIP right from a few hours ago. They said ROIP to Nigeria democracy. Nothing is going to happen again. You imagine a lot of people travel for the diaspora in different countries around Nigeria, in the neighboring countries. They travel down to Nigeria just to ensure they cast their vote. But at the end of the day, nothing happened. Their vote did not count according to the interview that a lot of these people have been granted. They said their vote did not count. Mama Yakubu did a lot of criminality. Now people are saying that since Mama Yakubu is still the INEC chairman and no justice is being made and all of that, 
like they said nothing will happen in all the state governorship election that the same criminality that is taking place the selection that mama yakobo is doing is what will still be taking place it's still the same thing that will still be playing out and if you like come out and vote your vote will still not count it is until nigeria get it right it is until the system that is built to bring in new presidential candidates to bring in new governorship candidates to bring in new democratic candidates it is until the system get it right which is the INEX system it is until they get it right and they are independent as they claim because a lot of people believe that INEC is not independent they are already trapped by the ruling party according to what people have been saying up and down they say INEC is already loyal to the ruling party for another party to rule in the presidential race and all of that and in different governorship race it will be very difficult because the ruling party have hijacked the system that is bringing in and that is allocating new candidates that win the election and all of that now what do you guys think do you really think nigeria democracy is still surviving because tinobu according to what tinobu have been saying up and down and what he have been doing up and down you know Kup took over niji Kup took over burkina faso and some other places in africa Kup took over different countries and even in jay itself Kup took over in jay but at the end of the day Tinubu came out he said he wants to restore democracy in all those countries they tried to fight niji and all of that just to ensure that they restore their democracy and all of that so that they can restore their democratic president and all of that but niji said no they will never agree to that because the niji in question is part of ekowas and Tinubu is the chairman of ekowas so as the chairman of ekowas he was trying to restore democracy in niji and some other countries like burkina faso where Kup took over and all of that but at the end of the day he wasn't successful so he did a lot of things but the thing did not work out now a lot of people have been throwing shit to Bola Ahmed Tinubu that democracy died in your own country there's no democracy in your country and you are trying to restore democracy in another man's country and you give out what you did not have they said Nigeria democracy is dead and Nigeria is not practicing democracy again why is it that Tinubu is trying everything possible to restore democracy in other people's country and all of that but Tinubu did not see that question to answer so drop your opinion in the comment section on this video do you really agree with what people have been saying that nigeria democracy is dead do you think when mama yakobo still remain as the INEC chairman do you think things will work out in the democratic system of nigeria drop your opinion in the comment section on this video i'm gonna let you get another thing order for you ensure you follow me on my social media handles on facebook at life watch tv and life entertainment on instagram at flagipo guess what guys see you in my next video bye Pastor, where the lion top be pastor? For like you pop watch TV. Pastor, where the bar? Where where? Politics are where they do pass me. Say, for a leader. Why are you waiting for church? Pastor, 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 pastor. All I like you pop watch TV.